Alright, so today we have a fairly interesting case in our desk. This is an older A17, uh, A1278 that is killing batteries. The customer tried like three batteries on it and each battery it killed. So it they plugged into another known working MacBook and the battery is not detected. So the first thing that I think about when something like that is happening, I am thinking that the a 12 volt rail is being shorted to the 3 volt battery detection circuit um, or the battery SM bus circuit so there's probably something up in the charge controller circuit or something around the battery maybe maybe the SMC is bad something like that but most likely I am thinking that something around the ISL 6259 is causing that voltage to leak the I mean I'm, that's causing the uh, high voltage rail so the 12 volt rail to leak into the 3 volt battery circuit killing the battery probably killing the SMC as well so this is an older 820 ancient 820 uh, 2879 from 2010 this is a old board this is a dinosaur um, but they cu the customer still wants to move forward with fixing it so we're going to go ahead and do it so the first step is going to be a visual inspection of the um, battery charging circuit which could very well be responsible for our issue so here is the battery connector right here. So this is just a simple connector. Um, we have our two SM bus lines here as well as the um, 12 volt battery line and ground. That's all there is to it. Here, hmm, wonder what this thing does. So this is very clearly corroded and looks pretty nasty. Look at that corrosion right there. Looks really, really healthy, doesn't it? Anyway. Let's go ahead and look at the board view and schematic and see what this chip does, because this chip is going to be responsible for something. Um, let's see what it does. Let's go ahead and move, um, put the right board view on our screen and have a look. So we have the right board view up here. And we can see this is U7000. So U7000 is what? So here's U7000 right here. We notice we have some charger lines. Hmm, wonder what this does. PDF, open. PBUS supply slash, slash battery charger. Wonder if that has anything to do with this issue. Notice we have some connections to our SM bus lines right here. SM bus is the SMC communication lines to the battery charge controller and to the SMC. So here is um, here's our our charge circuit right here. Let's go back over to the board view and note that this area was incredibly corroded right here. It was decimated right around here. And notice that we have our SM bus lines right here and we have um, PB. PP3V42 and some other charger lines. Now PP3V42 in and of itself should not cause an issue. That's right around the same voltage, so it's not going to cause an issue. A uh, charger Amon, I wouldn't think it would be, but these could if any voltage was crossing across. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and um, replace the ISL6259 and retest it and see if um, it still kills batteries. My guess is it won't. Um, another thing that could possibly kill a battery is if a PP bus was... Um, 16 volts when it should be 12 volts and that is uh, something that is very possible on this board It seems to happen quite a bit on this board I've seen a bunch of these when I was first starting with that issue So we could go ahead and replace the MOSFETs as well as if we think they're if we think they're bad But what I'm gonna go ahead and do is plug this in and see what voltage I'm getting on um, PP bus G3 hot and that's gonna tell me what I need to do roughly if it's 16 volts we're gonna replace the ISL and the um, MOSFETs so this DCM board looks really bad, so I'm not expecting anything good about that. Let's go ahead and actually put a new one on, because look at this DCM board. Come on, that doesn't look right. We're not going to let that happen here. So we are going to grab new DCM board. It's not really a new one, it's just the one we test. We'll put a new one in it when the device get, comes out, when the device is done with repair. We actually get a green light in that charger. That's actually pretty surprising. What's PP bus? So PP bus is going to show up on this fuse right here. PP bus is 12.32 volts. So those MOSFETs are actually okay. So that's that is ruled out. So what we're going to go ahead and do is replace um, the ISL6259 and see if it still kills our battery. There's another battery in there right now. Hopefully that one did not get killed, but we will see. So we're going to put some flux down. Do 
don't really have to worry about using too much in this board because it's going to get ultrasonic. That's my policy. If you have any liquid damage whatsoever, it gets an ultrasonic bath. This doesn't really look like liquid damage. This looks like um, condensation caused this. And those SM bus lines look really nice. So these two pins that were corroded are the SM bus lines right here. These two are pins 10 and 11, which look at that. Don't those pins just look beautiful? Don't those pins look like they're perfectly fit of carrying an electric charge? No, they really don't. So what we're going to do is scrape and see if we can't revive these. If not, we'll run a wire, a couple wires. Yeah, there's nothing left there. A little bit here, but this one has nothing. I'm going to go ahead and wick away all this junk around here. Grab some fresh solder. And our wick. Knocked one pin over, one pad. Not a problem, we'll fix it. It happens. Alright, so one of these pads is okay, we could actually reuse that, but one is definitely going to need a wire. Um, this little guy over here, we're just going to push back. Happens sometimes. Just like that, and that is not a concern. Let's go ahead and clean some of this up. See that pad came back off. We'll go ahead and push that right back. See that? That pad is trying to escape. But we're not going to let that happen. Back over here. Perfect. All right, so we're going to have to run a wire from this via. This one is actually okay. So this is uh, one of the pins. Here's one and here's the other. This is actually pretty impressive how bad it corroded for a little 3-volt line. Um, I'm probably going to run two wires on this because I don't really like the way um, that pad looks. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now how we're going to do this is we are going to uh, scrape away at these two little vias right here. See there's two vias right here. There's one and then one. And then we're just going to run a little wire, two little wires over to this pad, over to here. And we're going to conformal code it all when we're done. So I am going to start by just scraping just a little bit at this uh, via. We don't want to damage it so we're just going to use some light pressure. Helps to kind of scrape at the trays too, to kind of get it started. And if you ever feel like you're struggling or it's too dirty or whatever, just get a little alcohol and put it over the area. The alcohol will help you, um, will make the scraping away that coating a little bit easier as well. So we're just going to put some alcohol there. more that should be good that's the coppers all exposed so we should be able to get some solder on that we'll go ahead and do this one right over here this one is not as bad by any means 
but I still want to wire for longevity. Why save, you know, two minutes of my time when it could mean a device not coming back? alcohol. Alcohol dries pretty quick, so. That's completely off frame, oh well. You guys might have missed what I was doing, but yeah, I was just scraping away at these vias. So I apologize that was off frame. It's kind of hard to tell when it's off frame because what I see is completely different than what you guys th see through the scope. But that is good. That is ready for soldering. Let's get some wires on these two uh, vias. Little flux. Get our iron now. Let it get nice and hot. This knife tip is really good for stuff like this because you could use the little tiny edge to really, really uh, get in there on certain stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's stuff this tip is just not good for at all, but stuff like this, it's amazing for. Should be good like that. Let's go ahead and uh, tin the rest of the pads on this chip as well. Because we're going to replace it very shortly. There's like nothing left of this pad right here. That's good. There's this little tiny piece of that pad that came off and it's right here at the edge of this chip. I want to get rid of that. It is gone. Let's go ahead and get some really, 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 really tiny little jumper wire. We have our little wires right here. To be pretty careful with these. They're so thin and so fragile. I don't want these to cross, so I'm going to try and get the solder joint down here rather than up there because I just don't want any contact between these. This one's like the perfect length. Let's 
just need a little bit more solder on my tip. That's down there. Should have enough solder right there as well. I'm going to go ahead and make sure this, this joint right here is good. And it looks good. Make sure these are nice, straight, and aligned, and then we can go ahead and uh, drop our new chip on. Pretty much as good as I'm going to get it right there. A little bit more solder right here. The main concern that I don't want is I don't want those um, the solder blob from that center pad squishing out on those two wires. It's probably going to happen, but either way, we'll we will resolve it if it happens. Kay, we have our new ISL six two five nine right here. It's always a pain to align the chip when you have wires under it. It really is. It's not fun. But there it is. I'm not going to push it down. As long as all the pins are connected, we'll be okay. We do have to touch up uh, right here because one came off. And see how these... These pins are touching, but the, I don't like them, so I'm going to go ahead and resolve that. But first things first, I'm going to go ahead and um, get that little pin soldered back on that trace. Then we will uh, conformal coat this green as well. Or put green conformal coating, as I should say. Doesn't really matter. It's connected, but it's dry. A little bit of flux. Using uh, 559 because I mean uh, 560 because it stays active a little bit longer than 559. And I'm going to go ahead and touch these pins up. Just like that. That's how I want them to look as they look right there. Do that for all four sides. This side looks actually pretty good. See, so I'm going to leave this side alone. It looks fine. This side doesn't, however. And this side, which is going to be pretty tricky. I want to get some nice joints on these little pins to the chip as well. It's really not soldered too well. It's soldered to the board, 
but it's not soldered to the chip, and I want it to be soldered to the chip. I think it's all right. We're going to go ahead and test it in a second after I get this one soldered. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and see if we get PP bus at 12.59 volts. And that will be our judge if, that, if everything there is correct. If it's low or high, then we need to rework those little wires. Charger's plugged in, we get a green light. I'm gonna go ahead and check my voltage on, oh, we have some more corrosion right here, imagine that. Glad I saw that. Where's the fuse? Here's fuse. I'm expecting it to be a little bit funny because uh, there's flux around it and I think we've covered this in a previous video but any flux near the ISL can produce skewed readings. Alright. 12.44 volts which means that the flux around the ISL is causing some issues. So let's go ahead and get rid of all that flux around it and we will remeasure. Right, let's go ahead and clean up this ISL with some flux. I mean some alcohol and q-tips. No clean flux is slightly conductive. I know it says it doesn't. This is mainly the case in high impedance circuits. It's not really a problem in low impedance circuits, but in high impedance circuits it can cause some voltage leakage, which will cause that weird 12.40 bug that we see when there's flux around the ISL. So we're just going to clean this. That is significantly cleaner. Let's go ahead and plug it in now and see what our voltage is. So, charger is plugged in. We have a green light on the charger. And let's go ahead and measure voltage on the fuse. And we have 12.59 volts, so let me show you guys on camera. And you guys are probably going to be wondering why I'm wearing something different than the last video. Well, um, I had to stop the video yesterday, and we're back the next day, and I'm working on it. So that is why. See, 12.59 volts. Now let's test this thing with a battery and see if it still works on the battery, or if it did indeed kill the customer's battery, as they stated. All right, uh, board's back in the enclosure. We're going to go ahead and hit the power button here. So battery's plugged in. And the fan spins. Look at that. The fan actually spins. Let's see if it chimes and posts. That is a chime. And this is hopefully an Apple logo. 
I am not going to let this boot fully because this is a 5400 RPM spinning hard drive and this is a Core 2 Duo, so we'll be here a long time. But you see the progress bar. This is booting and this is fixed, um, so we should be good to go. Thank you for watching, and I hope this helps you solve your problem. If you have a similar issue that board is killing batteries, probably an issue around the ISL as usual. So anyway, that's it for today.